around 20 are deadly to us. Why are we so frightened of spiders? Is it their hairiness? These hairs may look beautiful, but they're lethal. Hidden deep in the rainforest, this animal is far more deadly than any spider. Because the forest where it lives is so remote, it hardly ever comes into contact with people. This is exactly the sort of place that armies do their training. Private Rafael Ramirez was 22 years old. At first, all Raphael felt was an itching and burning where he'd been stung. Ten days later, he was fighting for his life. So what is this deadly creature? During the day, it rests. But as evening falls, it begins to stir. In fact, it's not one animal, but several. Caterpillars. A horde of hairy caterpillars. Caterpillars become increasingly poisonous. Every hair is like a miniature syringe. Just brushing against it is enough to break the tip and release the toxin. The venom causes massive internal hemorrhages, but only after a lapse of several days. Why the caterpillars are so poisonous is a mystery. Such a slow-acting toxin would be little use as a defence. Medically, we might even turn that to our advantage. The venom is one of the most powerful anti-blood clotting agents known. Most of us don't need to lose any sleep over creatures that live in wild and remote places. That is, until we decide to build cities there. Sydney is home to three million people, and it's also home to one of the most venomous Australians. The infamous Sydney funnel web spider. A funnel web can kill a child in two hours. People often go barefoot, especially in summer, just when the more venomous male spiders go looking for a mate. By a curious quirk of fate, the funnel web's venom is lethal to people. But most other mammals are scarcely affected. Despite its reputation, the funnel web's killed only 13 people in 80 years. So it scarcely ranks as public enemy number one.
This spider bites more people than any other. The wandering spider of Brazil. It's one of the deadliest. It comes right into city centers, especially where there's waste ground or rubble. And in the cold months of May and June, it often wanders into shops and houses. A barber shop in Sao Paulo. It's warm and humid in here, and there are plenty of safe places to hide away. By September, the female spiders are brooding egg sacs. They'll guard them for two months. A brood can have over a thousand young. As soon as they hatch, their venom is as potent as their mother's. Fortunately, they're too small to bite through human skin. And that's just as well. In Sao Paulo State, over a thousand people are bitten every year by the adults alone. When the babies hatch, the mother leaves them and ventures into the world outside. From a spider's point of view, and they're very sensitive to vibration, the human world of hustle and bustle must seem very threatening. Since the introduction of anti-venom, none of Sao Paulo's 14 million people have died from a wandering spider's bite. And most of the time, it's very discreet. Believe it or not, these kill more people than any spider. They're the maggots of the screw worm fly. It's found throughout South America, especially where there are large concentrations of warm-blooded animals. Cattle ranching is the mainstay of the economy in several South American countries. Meat from here goes all over the world. Cattle are stocked at densities that wouldn't be found in any natural situation. Scratches and cuts are common, and in this warm and humid climate, they don't heal very quickly. Fresh blood attracts the female screwworm fly. Not just cow's blood, but people's too. When she finds an open wound, she lays her eggs in it, as many as 400. Within 24 hours they hatch, and the maggots eat their way into the living flesh. When they're full grown, they drop out onto the ground. By then, they may have killed their victim. They burrow into the ground and pupate. In as little as six days, the next generation of screwworm flies hatch out to start the cycle all over again. As ranching expanded, screwworm numbers soared. Some half a million cattle and 50 people a year were dying. All because of a fly. 
something had to be done. In 1976, the United States took action. They built a maggot factory. It produces a hundred million maggots a week. But if maggots are the problem, why breed more? The screwworm pupae are irradiated. That makes the flies that hatch from them sterile. Millions of these sterile flies are released to mate with the wild population. The result? No more screwworms. They've been virtually eliminated from Central America and the southern United States. The ranch lands of the Americas aren't the only place we've created ideal conditions for unwelcome neighbours. Here, in North Africa, people are fighting a kind of guerrilla war. Their enemy moves by night, and it's infiltrated the very fabric of their homes. A local vigilante group plans the night's campaign. They quarter the town, and take a different route each night. Their weapons are torches and tweezers. Their enemy is the fat-tailed scorpion. Ultraviolet torches make the scorpions glow in the dark, so they're easier to find. On a warm summer night, the catch can be over a hundred, mostly males looking for a mate. The scorpion's venom is easily strong enough to kill a man, and its powerful muscular tail can drive its sting through clothes, even shoes. Scorpions naturally seek out moist, shady places under rocks. A town wall is the perfect place for a female to bear her young. She can have up to 50 a year. She'll stay with them and guard them for their first two weeks of life. At this stage, they're soft and vulnerable but by two months their stings will have hardened and they'll disperse. Desert towns are ideal scorpion habitat with lots of shady nooks and crannies but the towns are only there because we've discovered how to make the desert green. Irrigation channels bring water to what was once dry scrub Scorpions thrive in these moist oases. There can be one scorpion to every 10 square meters. I have been stung 13 times. It is very painful. You can't always see the scorpions coming. They can climb all the way up your back and sting you. They also climb up your trousers and sting your legs. We are most likely to be stung when digging in the sand. This scorpion killed thousands of people a year. Now there is effective antivenom. But scorpion numbers are increasing all the time. Of all the creatures that creep and crawl, which is the biggest killer? It's not a scorpion, 
and it isn't confined to exotic, faraway places. It's all over the world, and it's a particular problem here in suburban Texas. This is where it all started in the 4800 block of Rogerson. Juan Flores was mowing his lawn when he was violently attacked. It was a sunshiny day. It, uh, the lawn called for mowing. I turned it on and I began. I only did no more than three feet around that tree. I was standing here. And, it was, and, I, was, and I was facing that way. And I backed off. And as I, I, when I got to about, about approximately right here, it's when I felt rushes, I mean hits. the noise brought neighbors out of their homes to see what was going on. He was screaming, help, help, I can't, I can't see, I can't see, you know, it was, it was bad. That's why we, you know, we came out here, you know. There was banging on the door. It was, my first thought was, she's someone is must be awfully mad. I was really pounding, help me, help, please. And so I thought to myself, well, I'm going to let him cool down a little bit, you know, and so I didn't get up immediately. But I grabbed the doormat, and I remember turning around as I picked it up, and I swatted several, and I took several shots, swings. Later on that uh, morning, I found our, our mat over by his garage, uh, and you could see all the, the dead bees on the, on the welcome mat. They're bees, and wow, did they chase? Don't swing at them. And it was discovered they were killer bees. Vibrations from the lawnmower set the bees off. Officials say the hive had been there for several weeks. 47,000 were living there rent free, as a guy told me, kiddingly. Killer bees are actually ordinary honeybees, but they're a particularly aggressive strain. Beekeepers brought them to Brazil in 1956 to improve honey yields. But some escaped, and since then, they've been spreading steadily north. Yes, I'm lucky. Uh, after 162 times, I've told my wife many times, wow, I'm, I, I, I am lucky. That's a lot. Worldwide, bee stings kill tens of thousands a year. Some of us are allergic to bee venom and can die of shock from a single sting. With the so-called killer bees, it's sheer numbers that kill. The bees reached southern Texas in 1990. Every year, thousands of swarms are destroyed. But ultimately, only the cold of the North American winter may stem their onward march. This is where the killer bees originally came from, Tanzania. Here in their native land, there's a different tale to tell. Local people don't try to destroy them. They even encourage them by placing hives in the woods around their villages. As darkness comes, the men get ready to gather honey. Campfire songs praise the bee and its honey. These are the same aggressive bees that cause such havoc in America. So how will the men avoid being stung? They go to the hives clad only in loincloths. Not as foolish as it seems, naked skin's less likely to entangle and infuriate a bee.
To do this in daylight would be suicidal. But the bees are quieter at night, and smoke from a smouldering torch pacifies them even more. In Africa, people have been harvesting honey for thousands of years. They've learned to live with the bees, quietly and in harmony. Even though the bees can be killers, they're respected rather than feared. Far more terrifying are the unseen creatures of the night, the terrors real and imagined that haunt our sleep under the cloak of darkness. Next week, the night, bringing sweet sleep, but some very bad dreams. She's about to lose it, agony for Maureen Lipman, but comedy for us next tonight on BBC One.